Welcome to Sock Valley Media's Blitz for week one of the high school football season. I'm sports editor Dan Wasner alongside sports reporters Patrick Petoskey and Ty Reynolds and we're going to take you around the 14 area high school football games in week one starting with Dixon at Monmouth Roseville. Monmouth Roseville went 9-3 last year and many of you remember that they played Newman, the Newman Comets in the 3A playoffs and lost. They return Martel Hunter, a Division I prospect at running back, which will be a tough assignment for the Dixie Dukes this week. The Dukes return key offensive players like J.D. Heaton, Matt Coffey, and Dave, Dane Sheline, which should make it a high-scoring game. My prediction, Monmouth Roseville 24, Dixon 12. Our next game is Metamora at Sterling. Uh, Metamora is the alma mater of Sterling head coach John Schlemmer. They have been to the playoffs 19 straight years including state championships in 5A in 2007 and 2009. They won their last seven games last year. Sterling also finished on a hot streak, won four of their last five. But both teams lost in the first round of the playoffs. Sterling has been to the playoffs 11 straight years. I predict a hard-fought battle, but Metamora 27, Sterling 14. Our third game is Harvard at Rock Falls. Harvard won 25-20 last year and finished the season 5-4, and four, although they missed the playoffs. Rock Falls turn, returns 12 key starters. Rock Falls is going to win this one in a shootout, 49 to 42. The next game is Moments at Oregon. Last year, Moments beat the Hawks 40 to 21 in Moments. This week, this year, it will be at Lander's Loomis Field, and Moments will not have DeAndre White, who rushed for over 6,000 yards in his high school career. He graduated and was looking for a D1 program to play for. At last, uh, last look, the Hawks return key offensive players like Tyler Boom and Nick Newman, but they're still going to need this to be a low-scoring game in order to win. But my prediction is Oregon 18-14. Next game is Hall at Bureau Valley. It's the renewal of a rivalry that started many, many years ago, uh, two teams in Bureau County. Um, Bureau Valley lost three straight games to end last season uh, and are looking to start this season on the high note that they were. They were 3-1 and one last year before the wheels kind of came off the bus. Hall was 1-8 and eight last year in their first year back in the Big Rivers. Uh, they overcame the death uh, of one of their uh, offensive linemen in the first day of practice, and they also add St. Bede quarterback Taggart Venegas, who had transferred in the spring semester of last year. I still like Bureau Valley in this game, however, 34-14. Our next game on the schedule is Kiwani at Erie Prophetstown. Kiwani went 1-8 last year. Not much showing for him. Erie Prophetstown returns 10 starters. They have a lot going for them. Erie Prophetstown won last year's game 41-0. Same tally as this year. Our next game is Orion at Fulton. Uh, Eastern Pearl City remember Orion from last year's 2A playoffs when they upset the Wildcats. They returned starting quarterback Blake Matson and 2A standout Cody Hutchinson. Um, they also lost to Ammo in the second round of the playoffs, 43-18. Fulton also returns a lot of players, including the area's returning leading rusher in Austin Reaganweather and quarterback Ethan Jones. My prediction is it's going to be a shootout. Orion wins 35-27. Next on the slate, Princeton at Morrison. Princeton is very young and inexperienced. They were 0-9 last year, like Patrick said. Not very much going for them either. Morrison, on the other hand, is in the middle of a numbers crunch. They only have two returning starters. However, they get this game at home, and I like them to win 20-7. Next up is Rock Ridge at Newman. Rock Ridge went 7-3 last year and lost in the first round of the playoffs to Rockford Luther, 62-40. Newman is returning eight starters from last year's fourth round playoff team. Rockridge's line has four new faces and a new coach this year. That is why Newman is going to be too much for them to handle and will win 35 to 21. Our next game is St. Bede at Amboy. St. Bede moves over to the Three, three Rivers South this year after being in the Big, big Rivers with Amboy last year. Both teams have been hit hard by graduation. St. Bede only has five returning seniors and two of them, only two of them started a year ago. They're going to depend a lot on sophomores, which, which could make for a long season. Amboy was hit hard by graduation also, but they should be able to hang their hats on a strong defense and making plays in the passing game. My prediction, Amboy 28, St. Bede 10. Next up is a NUIC Northwest battle, West Carroll at Eastland Pearl City. West Carroll does return 10 starters from a 3-6 team. They are looking for their first 500 season since 2007 when they were 6-5 with Chris Anderson at quarterback. As impressive as that is, Eastland Pearl City returns 14 starters from a 9-1 team. And uh, even though they're replacing their quarterback who transferred uh, when his family moved to Freeport, I still like EPC in this one, 41-14. Next game is Warren at Milledgeville. 
Warren made the playoffs last year and returned six all-conference players, the most all-conference players out of the area. Millsville returns 13 starters. However, Warren won last year 55 to 20. In the end, Warren will be too much to handle, and Missiles will be defeated by a closer margin this year of 42 to 28. Our next game is the Aquin Bulldogs at the AFC Raiders. Um, Aquin won last year's game 42-12. AFC went 5-4 and four and did not qualify for the playoffs, and they lose starting quarterback Andrew Lefevre and Jake Caker, who amounted for pretty much the entire offense for the Raiders last year. They do have a strong group of returning linemen, but I think they're going to have a hard time figuring out their offense in the first game at least against a perennial, perennial playoff team like Aquin. My prediction is Aquin 21, AFC 16. And the final game we have this week, uh, in the opening week, is Polo at East Dubuque. Polo was back in the... NUIC Upstate after two years in the northwest half of the conference. They returned 10 starters and they have a, a very good mix of returning linemen and returning backfield players. However, East Dubuque made the playoffs for the first time since 2001. They are the favorite in the Upstate from everybody I've talked to. Um, they return a lot of experience from the 6-4 and four team last year and I think that they're in the first week going to be too much for Polo. It's going to be East Dubuque 34, Polo 20.